In this video, I'll demonstrate my process for creating a spec title sequence that is inspired by the Yellow Jackets titles. Hi, my name is Cameron and I'm the creator of Motion Science. Before we get started, I want to invite you to join my motion design workshop at motionscience.tv slash workshop where I unveil my personal techniques and hidden gems that I use in my daily workflows. This is a free workshop and takes about 30 minutes. Don't miss out on this chance to level up your skills and make sure to visit motionscience.tv slash workshop. After watching this video, you will not regret it. In this video, I'll demonstrate my method for creating a spec title sequence. If you're interested in working in title design, creating a spec title sequence for your reel is one way of quickly breaking into the industry. This particular title sequence was inspired by the Yellow Jackets titles. If you haven't seen them yet, definitely check them out. My first step in creating the title sequence is selecting the footage. For a real world title sequence, the studio would most likely provide the footage or you would be tasked with filming the footage. But when building out spec work, I can use suitable stock footage. I use ArtGrid to search for keywords such as mystery, murder, and weird. I play around with different keywords to find the right striking shots for my project. I next head over to Epidemic Sound to find a music track that will drive the feeling in the pace of my edit. I don't spend a lot of time searching for music. Again, I enter keywords into the search bar and branch off from there. The key here is to give myself creative limits like time. If I don't limit my time searching for assets, I can end up spending hours or even days looking for elements. I download several footage and music options to work with and I import them into Premiere Pro. I drag and drop the different music tracks on the timeline and I focus on finding the right vibe when matched with a visual. Again, I don't spend a lot of time doing this. As soon as a music track strikes me as interesting, I select the remix tool and remix the music to my desired length. When creating spec work for my reel, it's not necessary to create really long pieces either, because if you think about it, pieces on a reel are generally just a few seconds long. Now I start the editing process. I spend an hour or two dragging and dropping shots over the music. I rearrange the clips, I experiment with in and out points, and I have fun with this process. Because what's the point in creating spec work if you're not enjoying the process, if you're not learning, and if you're not having fun? Even though there was no real story to this title sequence because the show doesn't actually even exist, I'm focusing on telling a visual story of some kind. The visual story doesn't have to make sense, it just needs to flow visually. Once I have the footage in place, I then send the sequence of footage into After Effects through Adobe Dynamic Link. I replace the timeline in Premiere Pro with an After Effects composition. This process is simple and it sends the Premiere Pro edit directly over to After Effects. Pro tip, I quickly jump back into Premiere Pro at this point and I undo the last step. The reason I undo this dynamic link in Premiere Pro is because if I ever need to fine tune the edit back in Premiere, I can still do so without having to edit in After Effects. The timeline in Premiere is still the individual clips. Now back in After Effects, I start to layer in VHS and analog tape noise. I layer this textured footage at the top of my timeline to add visual interest over the existing shots. I also have a package of VHS effects from AE Juice that also helps to add more texture and more visual interest. I'm going to link these VHS textures in the description below if you're interested in picking them up at a great price. I experiment with different video looks and signal distortions until I start to get something that piques my interest. I love to layer effects and textures and build up looks. I try things that work and I try things that don't work. The thought process behind this is to experiment and look for those happy accidents. These are those moments where you say to yourself, yep, that looks really cool. I can't stress enough here that having fun is so key. It's so important to enjoy the process. Now the look is starting to come together, so I switch gears to focus on color adjustments. It's important that each of these clips fits together in the sequence. I want the clips to all look like they were shot together, so I use some color correction effects like curves, tint, and CC toner. I always prefer to go simpler routes when developing looks, and these effects are simple tools that lead to good results. For this project, I experiment with color palettes and I find that blue and green are working quite well. 
Next up is type layout. As a motion designer, you only need a handful of typefaces in your toolkit. And one of my favorites is Den. For this project, it will work. Now with the type sitting below the effect adjustment layers, the effects are way too heavy on the type and make it challenging to read. So I decided to relayer the type above the adjustment layers. Now the type is a little too perfect looking sitting at the top of the layer stack. So here's a pro tip for you. Add a very small amount of blur to the type to help it look more organic. Usually this is a very small amount of blur under a few pixels. And in this case, because the type is so small, the amount of blur is below one pixel. It's a subtle change, but it's all in the details. I create a few more moments of type using made up names and I position the type using the rule of thirds. Using the rule of thirds helps to give my composition balance. To enhance the overall look of the composition and give it that last extra bit of finesse, I add one more adjustment layer towards the top. And to this layer, I add the red giant analog effect. This gives the title sequence that extra bit of a CRT look that I had envisioned. Lastly, I will make the final color adjustments to any clip that I find isn't quite working within the sequence. This is that last 10% adjustment that is critical in developing professional quality motion design. And there you have it, my process for creating spec title work for my reel that is inspired by the Yellow Jackets titles. Because this is my own spec project, I can create whatever I wanna see. This is the work that creatively fulfills me. Maybe someone else will see this piece on my reel and be inspired. Or even better, maybe someone else will see the project and hire me or pay me to create something very similar. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it both informative and entertaining. If you did, could you do me a huge favor and hit that like button? Also, if you want to see more content just like this in the future, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Your support means everything to me, and it really helps me to keep creating more great videos for you. I would love to hear your thoughts on the video, so please leave a comment or question below. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I can't wait to connect with you in the next video.